Meseches Ksubis Daf Mem Aleph begins with a Mishnah and takes us to the end of the third part of the Masechta. The topic of the Daf is one who admits to doing a crime which carries a knas, it carries a fine, a punitive amount that he needs to pay as a punishment. The halacha is one only pays a fine, he only pays punitive damages if he is found guilty of a crime by a court of certified judges with smicha, which is an Eretz Yisrael. If one admits on his own, or one is found guilty by a court outside of Eretz Yisrael, he does not pay fines. Now, our Mishnah will begin by listing a number of different types of things that you may need to pay, which ones are considered to be knas, and therefore you don't pay if you admit it, and which ones are considered to be compensation, restitution, and therefore you do pay if you admit it. We'll begin with halachos of mefuta, uh, and then we'll talk about other types of things, specifically if you hurt someone or you broke something, what are the damages you need to pay if you stole, in which case is it considered to be punitive, in which case is it compensatory. Compensatory. Now, the Gemara will discuss why we talked about Mufuta and not Onus, and nothing more will get into the sugya of Palganiska Knas or Palganiska Mamona, which is when somebody's ox gores someone, he only has to pay half the damages. Is that considered to be a uh, compensation, a restitution, or is that considered to be punitive? So let's begin. As we've been discussing, there are primarily two types of payments one would have to make for a crime that he does. One is compensation. Compensation is what we call mamon. He needs to pay because he caused the other person a loss. He devalued, broke, ruined, or stole from someone, and he has to make whole what he broke. He has to pay back for what he did. That's compensation. There, you pay even if you admit it. It's something that you owe. You have to make the person whole again. Punitive is where you're paying, and our mission defines punitive, not everyone defines it the same way, but this Mishnah defines a punitive is where you're paying more than what you damaged. You damaged $100, you're paying $101. That extra dollar is knas. It's punitive. It's meant to punish you. Now, there's a third type, which is called kofer, which is where you're paying in order to get out of a chiyav misa bide shamayim. Our Mishnah only refers to it obliquely. Rashi discusses it, and the Achonim have difficulty understanding the Rashi, but our Mishnah is an understanding that if you're paying to get out of a punishment in Mishamayim, that's called mamon, that's called restitution. That's not called knas, and therefore you would pay it if you admitted to it. So let's begin the Mishnah and its cases. So the Mishnah discusses somebody who says, he admits that I did a pitoy, I seduced a certain man's daughter. So there he's admitting. So the luck is that he has to pay for the damages and not for the knas. The knas is, of course, the knas, the 50 shekel knas that's prescribed in the Torah specifically. He doesn't have to pay that. That's punitive. But he does have to pay the bushes and the gum. He has to pay the embarrassment that he causes her. And he has to pay the devaluing that he causes her. Next case is somebody who admits that he stole. So stealing, you have to pay back what you stole, but then there's also a punitive aspect. If he stole because he was supposed to be watching something and he used it for himself, he has to pay twice the amount. So the extra time of the value that he has to pay, that he doesn't pay in this case because he's admitting that's knast. If he stole a sheep or cow and he slaughtered it or sold it, he has to pay four or five times the value. Again, those extra times are all knas, and if he admits it, he does not need to pay that. Now, if he says, my ox killed somebody, he admits his ox killed someone or someone else's ox, here he has to pay kofer. This Mishnah holds kofer is mamon, and therefore he does pay it, even though he admitted it on his own. However, if he says that his ox killed an eved, the law is that you will pay 30 shekel knas for the eved. That's a fine. That's punitive. It does not relate to how much the eved is worth. Even if the eved was only worth a nickel, he still has to pay the 30 shekels, and therefore that's completely punitive, and he does not have to pay that since he's admitting now we begin the Gemara. The Gemara wants to know if we want to talk about the aspects of pitoy, and was there, we want to show that some of it is knas and some of it is compensation, why do we talk about pitoy and not onus? Why don't we talk about an onus? Why don't we say that the onus also needs to pay only the tsar, the busha, and the begam, and he doesn't have to pay knas? So the Gemara says the Chiddush is that even for Pito he pays it. And the reason is that she may prefer to not get paid. And her father may prefer to not get 
paid. And that's because it's very bad for her a reputation for the word to get out that she was seduced by someone and she willingly participated in an act of znus. That's a tremendous shame. Ra, that's a tremendous laws against her. On an onus, you don't have that because she didn't do anything wrong. She was dishonest. Okay, she didn't, that's not as much her fault. It's not at all her fault, but it's not as much bad for her reputation. And therefore, uh, if the guy comes forward and he admits that I did this, we would understand that we would accept his word and he would therefore need to pay the damages. Um, the Chiddush is, is that in the case of Pitoy, where she may not want it, still he has to pay the damages. Now, that's the opinion of this Mishnah. The Gemara says it's Bryce, that shows that's actually a machlokis. Reb Shimon ben Yehuda says the name of Reb Shimon that that's not true. A person does not have the right to come forward and say, I owe for Pitoy, because the uh, he's further he's he's further causing harm to the girl by damaging her reputation. Now, says the Gemara, Reb Papa said to Abaye, what if she wants... He comes forward and says he was mafat to her, and she says, I prefer to get paid. I want to trust him, and I want to get paid. I prefer that I'm not worried about my reputation. So Abaye said, well, maybe her father doesn't want it. It affects him as well, and therefore she doesn't have the right to say, I want it at the expense of her father. So he says, what if her father also wants? So he says, other relatives will be negatively affected by being associated with this family. So he says, what if all the known relatives all admit, they all say, yes, we want it. We're not worried about the reputation. And he says, there has to be somebody at the far end of the world who is going to affect negatively who doesn't admit. So you cannot say, I choose the money over sparing my name. Right, now the Gemara goes into the topic of Palganiska. This is a discussion of we're leaving the sugya of Pitoy and Ones behind. The rest of the parak will be primarily about this. We'll bring some proofs from our Mishnah still, but this will be the topic. And that is as follows. If somebody has an ox and his ox goes and he attacks someone, not that he eats for the sake of his own pleasure, not that he his large size accidentally breaks something, but he goes and he angrily attacks someone. So that's called Karen. Any type of attack for the purpose of causing harm is called Karen. And the law there is that the first three times he's called a Tom, this ox is called a Tom, you did not expect him to do that. And you only have to pay half the damages after it happened three times. Now you already have to take precautions. And if it happens again, you have to pay full damages. So the question is this half damages that you pay, what is that? Is that compensation for half the damages you caused? Or is that knas? So the Gemara quotes the Machlokas and the Gemara is going to bring four proofs from the Machlokas and conclude with what the halacha is. So Rav Papa says that you really should pay full. You're responsible for the full damages. You're responsible to watch your ox. The fact that you didn't is your fault and you're really responsible to pay full, but the Torah took half of it off because it was odd. The ox behaved in an odd way. You, To some extent, you're not... You you could not have anticipated that he was uh, going to do that, so we took part of it off. But the half that you do pay is definitely compensation. It's not kanas, it's not punitive. And therefore, if you don't um, admit it, uh, if you do admit it, you will uh, still have to pay it because it is compensation. That's what Papa's opinion. The Gemara calls this Palganiska Mimona. The other opinion is Rav Huna Breed of Yeshua. He says, no, you really don't have to pay anything. Al Pidin, you don't have to pay anything. You could not be expected to uh, anticipate that your ox would go crazy and attack somebody. You're, co- you're completely putter. However, the Torah did want you to watch more than is anticipatory. It wanted you to be extra careful, more than you logically should have to. And therefore, it placed a penalty. It said you do have to pay half, and that's punitive. It's more than what you're responsible for. You're not actually responsible for anything. You do have to pay half as a penalty, therefore it's knas, and if you admit it, you wouldn't have to pay it. It would be moda beknas, someone who is on his own, determining that he needs to pay. Now the Gemara is going to bring four proofs on the subject. So first we have a Mishnah. The Mishnah says that the Nizik and the Mazik both take part in the payment of the damages. Nizik is the victim, the one whose ox or item or, or property was destroyed by this cow, 
The mazik is the owner of the damaging a cow. So they both, in a certain extent, they both lose. They both participate in the loss. So Gemara says, what does it mean they both participate in the loss? Obviously, it means that the half nezek is a restitution. There was a loss, and they're both taking half. The mazik pays half, but the nezek loses half because he only gets paid half. So that would seem to prove very clearly that the paga, that the half Nezek payment is restitution, not punitive. It's mammon and not kenas. So Gemara says that's not what it means. It's not what it, it means at all. We're not talking about how much you pay. We're talking about the amount that you do pay. Whether it's kenas or mammon, we're not getting involved. But the amount that you do pay, who deals with the corpse? Whose responsibility is it to deal with the corpse? And therefore, who loses if the value of the corpse drops from the time of the attack until the time you actually go to court. Now, the corpse, we're referring here to a case where an ox killed another ox, so the ox that was killed still has a lot of value, and uh, you don't just throw it away, so you have to deal with it. So this Mishnah is saying that the victim, the owner of the ox that was killed, he needs to deal with the ox. He has to get it hauled away. He has to find someone to buy it. He has to deal with it, takes the money for it, and then he can claim the rest of the money that he's owed. If it's a tom, then he only gets up to half the value that it was when it was alive. It's a mood that he gets the full value. So he needs to deal with it. Now, of course, therefore, he's going to lose. If he doesn't deal with it right away and it, de- it drops in value, it's his own problem. And he's it's, it was in his property and his responsibility that it was devalued. And he's going to be the one to take the loss if its value drops from the time of the attack until they actually get to court. So that's the sense is because the Nizik loses that that's what we mean when we say when this measure says both participate in the loss. Now, that is how the Gemara explains this Mishnah. Asks the Gemara that couldn't be the right shot because you have another Mishnah that says that. We have a Mishnah that says clearly Tashlume uh, Nezik, and we learn that that means to say that the owners, the Nizik, he's the one who has to take care of the corpse. So why do you need this Mishnah to tell me that they both participate in the loss? You're telling me that means that he's responsible for the loss, for the devaluing of the corpse. You have a different Mishnah that says he's the one who's who's responsible for the corpse. The Gemara explains one is talking about a Tom, one is talking about a Muad, and I need both Mishnahs. I need uh, Mishnah specifically to tell me that the Tom and the Muad, in both cases the Nizik is the one who has to bear the responsibility to deal with the corpse. And the reason is because both cases there's a more logical, there's a logical reason, there is a different reason, but there's a logical reason that it should be the Nizik's responsibility. So if I only said each case, I wouldn't know the other one. Why is it more logical in the case of the Tom that the Nizik is responsible? And that's because simply the Mazik could not have anticipated that this was going to happen. He's not as responsible as he is in the case of the Muad. In the case of the Muad, though, it's also logical that it should be the Nizik, because the Muad has to pay full. If he's already paying full, we would logically say, okay, maybe there I would say that the Nizik has to take care of the corpse, but in the case of the time, the Nizik would not, because he's only getting half. All right, now the Gemara moves on to its second proof, and this is a Bryce which discusses the differences between a Tom and a Muad, and it lists two differences. Difference number one, like we've been discussing, the Tom only pays half damages, the Nizik, the Muad pays full damages. Second difference is that the Tom's payment is limited to the value of the attacking ox. If the damage he causes more than his own value, you don't have to pay it. You don't have to pay the extra. The Muad, the Mazik has to pay from his estate, however much money he has, that's how much he has to pay, even if it's more than the value of the attacking ox. Now, the Gemara asks, why don't you say there's a third difference? The third difference is that if he comes forward, then he admits. Say that the Tom is Kanas, it's half the damages, and it's Kanas, and it can, you don't pay if you admit it, and therefore, um, that's a third difference between the two. You didn't say that. Obviously, it must be that it's not true, which means that half damages is compensation. It's not punitive, and there will be a proof to that opinion that Palganiska Mimona. So the Mercer does not necessarily it could be that there's a third difference between the two. We didn't list all of them. We listed two. Mercer says you can't list every them, all of them except for one. If you're leaving things out, you gotta leave out more than one. What else was left was left out? The Mercer says what's left out is 
kofer. That's the atonement that you pay if you kill somebody. The owner of the tam does not pay kofer. He doesn't have to pay for if his ox kills someone. Only the owner of the mood has to pay. So that's a fourth thing that was left out. So we listed two. We left out two. Not a problem. So Gemara says that's not correct. Tom wasn't left out here. Tom is not true. That this Mishnah is the opinion of Rebezi Aglili, who says that a Tom does pay Kofar. It's half Kofar, but he does pay Kofar. And that's why that was left out. So you're still missing that. All right. Now, the Gemara brings its next proof. And this is from our Mishnah. Our Mishnah had said that if our, that if your ox kills someone, or kill someone's ox, and you come forward and you admit it, then you do have to pay, unless it's an Evid. If it's an Evid, you don't have to pay. But if you if it's not an Evid, then you do have to pay, and that clearly shows that it is compensation and not Kanas. And the only question is, we're talking about a Tom or a Muad, so the Gemara says most likely we're talking about a Tom here. Why would I think I'm talking about a mood? So the Mur says, no, we're talking about a mood only. The Mur says, if you're talking about a mood, I have a different problem. But we want to show that there is a case where an ox kills that you don't have to pay because it is knas. Why do we go to Evid? An Evid is a knas, yeah, but why do we have to go to an Evid? Let's stay within our own case. We're talking about a regular person, a regular Ben Choran. And just say, if it would be a mood, then it would be... Uh, then it would... Uh, that since we're only talking about a... Mood here, but a tam is kanas. If it would be a tam, you would not have to pay because it's multiple kanas. So Gemara says we wanted to stay all within mood. We don't want to go to tam. It's not any more of a benefit to go to the topic of a uh, tam um, in order to stay away from an eved. We'd rather stay within a mood, and I don't mind talking about an eved. Gemara now brings its last proof, which is also from our Mishnah, and that is the rule the Mishnah says, the definition of Kanas, situation in which you don't pay on your own, and defining Mamon where you do pay on your own. So the Mishnah phrases it as follows. Anyone who pays more than he damages does not pay if he admits. That's Kanas. If it's more than he damages, that's Kanas. So the Mishnah says that implies that if he pays less than he damages, that's Mamon. So you see, you see clearly that Chatzin Nezik is Mamon. So the Mishnah says, no, that's not the right diak. The right diak is if he pays more than he damages, that's Kanas. If he pays what he damages, that's Mamon. But truthfully, if he pays less than he damages, that's also Kanas. So Gemara says, if that's what it means, then let it say. Anybody who pays what he damages is mamon. Why do you have to say, if he pays more, then it's kanas? That messes you up. Now you don't know what to do if he pays less. Let's say, if you pay exactly what you damage, that's mamon. Anything else is kanas. So Gemara says, good kasha to yufta. We've rejected the opinion from this Mishnah. We've rejected the opinion that says, chati nezik is kanas. Says the Gemara, even so, the Allah is a chati nezik is kanas. Versus, what do you mean? We already had a kasha on it. We just rejected it. How could you say that that's the halacha? Versus, because there is an answer, even though we didn't say it here. But the answer is that we could not say in the Mishnah that anytime you're paying what you damaged exactly, that's mamon, but anything else is kanas, because there is an example of paying less, which is not kanas going into everybody. And that's the case of tsuros, where an ox is walking and it steps on rocks and they go flying and it flies through the air and causes a damage there. That's chati nezik, but that is a part of the uh, av. Mazik of Regel, and that's full damages. Uh, that's half damages, but it is Momon according to everybody. There is no discussion that it's not Momon, and therefore we couldn't say anytime you're paying exact, that's when it's Momon, but anything else is Knas. It's not true because here you have an example of something which is less, but it is definitely Momon and not Knas. Says the Gemara, now that we've established that half Nezik is Knas, if somebody has a dog that eats a sheep or a cat that eats a very large chicken, these are weird behaviors, even though these are wild animals, but these are weird behaviors. It counts as Karen, it counts as being a Tom, and he only has to pay half Nezik. And if it happens in in outside Eretz Yisrael, it happens in Vavel, you don't have to pay for it. Because like we said, you don't collect Kanas unless you have a court in Eretz Yisrael. Now, if there are small sheep or small chickens, you do have to. That is normal. Um, that does not count as Kanas. Now, in the case of Kanas, the Gemara continues, if the Nizza goes and grabs the money, we let him keep it. We won't collect it, but... He, if he takes it, he can keep it. And if he asks the court to make him a court date in Eretz Yisrael, that he can claim Kanas there, 
That is, we don't have a case where it's admitted. We're not talking about where the person is part because he admitted. The person is part because it's in Vavel, to outside Eretz Yisrael. So there, if he grabs it, he gets to keep it. And if he asks the court to set him up an appointment with a court in Eretz Yisrael, we will do so. And we will tell the attacker that he has to go appear in court in Eretz Yisrael so that he can be held accountable and pay this knas, which we found him guilty of over here. Now, we will put the person in a if he doesn't agree to go. We'll also put the person in a if he doesn't do something about the animal that he has. You're not allowed to keep a wild dog that attacks. You're not allowed to keep a wild cat that attacks. As it says, um, You're not allowed to keep a wild animal or a weak ladder or anything else which is a accident waiting to happen. And we'll put the person in a until he takes care of it.